Hello, cavers. My name is Bill Steele. I live in Texas. I packed up and left Indiana and moved to Texas in 1976. And I've been an active caver in Texas ever since. I also go caving in Mexico, Oklahoma, sometimes in Tennessee, sometimes in Arkansas. But I'm about to tell you about the best cave discovery in the state of Texas in the years 2019 and this year, 2020, up until now. I was uh, invited to speak for the Texas chapter of the Explorers Club in late October of 2018. And instead of having the dinner with me as speaker as a dress up affair in downtown Austin, where they've been having their meetings lately, or in Dallas, I suggested since it was gonna be late October that it be outdoors at Longhorn Caverns. And we take a tour of Longhorn Caverns prior to the dinner meeting. And the uh, officers accepted that idea and set it all up. And we had the uh, dinner on this patio right here, just outside this beautifully built building built by the CCC in the uh, 30s during the depression. And it worked out really well. We took a tour of Longhorn Caverns in the afternoon. This is a beautiful entrance to the cave and saw the commercial part of the cave. I've done some exploration in Longhorn and some survey in the back reaches of it, but we stuck to the tourist trail through the cave and even saw where the dance floor had been in Longhorn Caverns back when it was a speakeasy during Prohibition and they had bands. They still have live music in there now and then. And then I was a speaker that night speaking about our project at Sistema Huatla in Southern Mexico. But I had also suggested that uh, I contact an old friend of mine, Orion Knox, who's an old NSS member, been around a long time, and was one of the original explorers of Natural Bridge Caverns. And I said, why don't we have another field trip in the morning, on that Saturday morning, to Natural Bridge Caverns, and I'll ask Orion if he'll give a narrated tour and tell us about the exploration of Natural Bridge Caverns that, as it occurred back in 1960 and through the early 60s. And Orion, who's now 78 years old and active, he agreed, and we, and we took a tour at Natural Bridge Caverns. Now, Orion Knox is right here in this picture from 1967 in Wautla. He was one of the original explorers of, of Sotono de San Agustin, and in fact, was one of the three original Austin cavers that arrived in Wautla in the summer of 1965 to see if there are any cave entrances there. And we're still caving there. But Orion uh, took us on a really nice tour of Natural Bridge Caverns and told us about the days of exploration as they proceeded through what is now one of the best tour caves in the country. Here's our group. Wasn't everybody that had attended the dinner that night, but it was those that uh, wanted to come see Natural Bridge Caverns with one of the original explorers. So that was in October of 2018. We took a tour of Natural Bridge Caverns narrated by Orion Knox, and afterwards we went to the visitor center where they had a wall of uh, a map of the wall, a map of the cave on the wall. And uh, Diana Tomchik, my partner. And I stood there with Orion and said, okay, is it all explored? Are there any leads? Thinking he'd say no, since it was the 60s that the, that the cave was explored. And he smiled and he pointed right to the dome pit and said, there is a dome, a beautiful dome that's well over 100 feet high, maybe 120 feet high. And we think there might be a passage up there. And of course I said, well, why has that never been climbed? And Orion said, well, Nobody seemed to have the skills to climb a wall that high, and also we don't know that the rock's all that solid. So I smiled back at him and said, let's go look at it, because uh, I bet it can be climbed. So in February of 2019, we took a trip to see the dome pit with the two brothers, the Wiest brothers, third generation owners of Natural Bridge Caverns, and young and capable and really interested in caving. And we took uh, our two scurry on headlamps, Diana and I did, because we figured if it's 100 feet high, we can see up there. If they were looking with carbide lamps back in the 60s, they didn't see up there. Let's take our scurry-ons and really see. So we did. 
And we uh, told them during that trip that in May, on my way back from Wautla, I would have the guy that I consider to be the best cave wall climber in the United States, Lee White, who at the time was living in, in uh, Alabama, but he was originally from Georgia. And God rest his soul, Lee passed away a few months later in a, in a tragic car wreck in uh, September of 2019. We also advised the Weiss brothers on caving gear because they were looking at our gear and asking about scurry-on headlamps and where to get a cave suit and where to get proper vertical gear and all that. So we told them where to get each of those things and they made notes. And while I was in Wautla on the April expedition of last year, they went back to the dome pit with a drone and they flew it up into that passage and flew it a little ways, not very far, but a little ways into Virgin Cave up there and confirmed that there was a canyon passage up there. And then when we got back from Wautla in early May, we went uh, back with Lee White and uh, I'm about to tell you the story. This is Lee White in Wautla. This is a shot by Chris Higgins with uh, Lee's famous chest hair showing and a DeWalt drill and a uh, rock hammer in his left hand. May the 8th, 2019, this is the group that went in the cave. Lee White's got his arms crossed, second person from the right. On the far right is Orion Knox going back in the cave and going back to watch Lee do his climb. In the middle, the uh, lady is uh, Joy Wiest, the mother of Brad Wiest, president of Natural Bridge Caverns, and Travis Wiest, vice president of Natural Bridge Caverns, and the present owners of this very successful show cave. Orion with his uh, Sten headlight, very happy to be going back in the cave for hopefully some exploration. So a trip back to the dome pit is not all that easy. You get off the tourist trail and immediately are squeezing between breakdown blocks, climbing up chutes, on your belly, crawling through a, a tight crawlway, going through some body contortions, and then there's a 60 foot drop, and then some slippery breakdown before you get to the dome pit. So we got back there and set Lee wide up for the climb. I'm on the right there, muddied up more than Lee, and I belayed him with a, a belay device that he uh, uh, approved of and wanted me to use. And he uh, set himself up ready to climb. I had been asked how long I thought it would take Lee to climb the dome pit. And I looked up it, that was in that February 2019 trip, and I looked up it and I said, if he can climb it, and I think he can, I don't think soft rock matters to him. He'll find good rock. He'll be safe. I think he can be up there in two hours. Well, he did it in an hour and a half. All these years since 1960, when they first saw it and suspected that there was passage up here, it took an hour and a half for Lee to climb it. Now here you can see a drone hovering while Lee's climbing. And two drones flew most of the time he did this climb, one lighting up the dome pit and the other videoing him. I asked him after he climbed it, what was it like to be up there on the wall with these drones buzzing around? And he smiled and said, actually, it was pretty cool. He liked being videoed. He liked being the star of the show. So he made it to the top. He rigged a static line. He uh, rappelled back down on the static line and took his hangers off the wall, cleaned the climb, climbed back up on the static line, and took a look into the canyon, and went a little farther than the drone had and confirmed that, yep, it goes. So here's a video of uh, his climb and, and uh, us going up that rope. Lee had done so much wall climbing that he was very, particular about where everything went, what everything was going to be that he had with him. There he is up on the wall with the drone approaching him. At this point, I'd say he's about halfway up the wall. So this is probably a good 45 minutes into the climb. 
Here he is farther up on the wall with a drone hovering back behind him. Progressing up the wall, he moves steadily. He's over here, and there are both of the drones. It's a video shot from the floor. This is him up on the wall, setting a bolt, or testing the rock to set a bolt. And then it pans down to the bottom, and you'll be able to see a pile of rope that's in front of me as I'm belaying him. Used a couple of natural anchors as he climbed. And then he rigged the static line, went back up, and here's Lee Bennett, I'm sorry, Bennett Lee, who I think is the best cave photographer in the okay. state of Texas. Here we are in the upper lead, and this is Virgin Passage no foot. This is the first cave I've ever crossed here. So. This is the first cave exploration that the Weiss brothers ever did. They were born into this cave. It was owned by the family when they were born. They spent their whole life there as guides running the concession stand, selling tickets, and now they're cavers. And here they are during their, during their first exploration in a cave they actually own. Beautiful formations up there. Delicate. We traveled ever so lightly. Gently. Never been seen before. Upper level canyon. This is the nature of it, pretty much. 600 feet like this. Sticky mud on the floor. Here's a pit. Came to a pit after 600 feet. It's off to uh, Travis's right. About 100 feet deep is what we reckoned by dropping a rock down there. And then beyond it, it went, continued on. We're two, 300 more feet. There's the natural bridge of Natural Bridge Caverns. That's what I named, named it when I kept book back there. Some old crusty formations up there. Like he said, there was a cross joint. Cave changed direction a little bit. And we need to go back up there. I'm not convinced that we, we climbed up and, and pushed this hard enough up above. There's a chance for a, a side passage there. But this is being shot with a GoPro on the helmet of Brad Weiss, one of the owners of the cave. Here's collecting guano, putting in a Ziploc. Old piles of guano. Got dated at about 7,500 years old. Repelling back down the dome pit. This was a great day. It went, he went, he said. He's learned some caver jargon. And then this video is shot from the uh, handrail of the commercial trail. This is looking off to uh, where we went to go to the dome pit. And the Weiss brothers, very happy, really did some exploration. Sticky mud on the floor of that upper level. Collecting the guano. Getting it dated. And like I said before, this was 7,500 years old and uh, guano in the main part of the cave had been dated back in the 60s at about 15,000 years old. So they got some publicity out of this. Here's a TV uh, news uh, announcement of the discoveries. Natural Bridge Caverns in San Antonio. We're so blessed to do what we do. Have been run by the Weiss family for three generations. I, I see something different just about every time. That statement, never more true for Travis Weiss than last week. Set foot where no one had set foot before. Since 1960, the family had known there was a passage atop of Dome Pit. Just, just Dome Pit. 
Here's the upper level. Finally, they found their man to scale the 120-foot wall, professional climber Lee White. He was part of a group along with the Weiss brothers making the 13-hour excursion back into the deep reaches of the caves. When he finally got to the top, I mean, I was, I was, I was almost in disbelief. I'm like, this is really going to happen. Like, we're going to get up there. What they found? Over 600 feet of new passage. The biggest discovery in over 50 years. A powerful moment for the Weiss brothers. You look on the ground and there's just, you know, perfectly smooth, undisturbed mud on the floor of the cave. And then you look behind you and there's those first footprints that you just put down. And that just, man, I mean, it was exciting. Who continue to keep the family tradition alive. My dad was part of the last major discovery in 1967. And my brother and I to be part of this expedition that just took place. And uh, for the biggest discovery in 50 years was just beyond this description. I'm Will Sherritt. For Spectrum. With Orion Knox. So there was publicity. There were newspaper articles in the uh, San Antonio Express News and the Austin American Statesman. And um, they got some uh, TV coverage about it. This was an online uh, article in the Hill Country Alliance. I even uh, saw myself on TV and grabbed a screenshot. I went on expedition. Went back. Uh, during the summer and um, drop down that 100 foot drop down to a big trunk passage below, which lines up with the uh, show, show cave part of the cave, and then drop down into another lovely section that's much like what's been open to the public since the 60s. A uh, couple of thousand feet of beautiful, well decorated passage below. So there have been trips since to survey all that, continue exploring. We have a meeting in the uh, conference room of the commercial cave that's presided over by Brad Weiss, president of Natural Bridge Caverns, who's in the red t-shirt. I'm at the head of the table with my partner, Diana Tomchik. And uh, it's well organized. Brad will discuss the objectives of the day and who's on survey teams and who's rigging and so forth. And uh, it's well organized. And we've gone back and found more cave. And it goes. Beautiful. I'll run through some shots taken by Bennett Lee of some of the gorgeous formations in that lower level. Not seen until last year. And only seen by a few people up to now. We surveyed. This is uh, Andrea Crosscree from Austin, who is uh, keeping books. She's very skilled at it. And she uh, has, has uh, led the survey team for the lower level. I've led the survey team up the dome pit and up the upper level. And uh, all of it's been surveyed. We took a cave radio that was loaned to us by Brian Pease from Vermont is generous in loaning a cave radio. And it was taken to, the, to almost the end of what's been explored. And uh, it uh, transmitted a long wave signal to the surface and cavers above on the surface, about 150 feet above, uh, found the exact location above the transmitter. And there's a chance that, uh, a good chance, and maybe even a probability that there will be a shaft entrance put in that will come in around here. You can see that the cavers here are dressed in pretty clean clothes because that's been the practice is to take off the muddy clothes at the bottom of the drop down what's called the river pit to the lower level and put on uh, clean clothes there and then uh, vice versa on the way out put the muddy clothes back on for the trip out because before you get out of the cave you're going to get mighty muddy and here we are back up on the surface in the wee hours of the morning, just before dawn, just before we hose everything off. Very happy that we got Going Cave and the best discoveries in the state of Texas in the years 2019 and so far in the year 2020. Appreciate the cave photographers. That hero shot of Lee White taken by Chris Higgins. Most of the underground shots were taken by Bennett Lee. I took some of uh, the surface shots 
And Joe Watson with the Texas Chapel the Explorers Club took that shot of uh, our group as we took the tour with Orion Knox in October of 2018. The drone videos were done by Jay Teal, Greg Passmore, and Colton Windham.